All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Mike Heath. Um, I work for the LDS Church in Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, just real quick, because I'm being recorded, my employer makes sure I say that everything I say is my own opinions, not necessarily the views or opinions of the LDS Church. Um, so just to give you a quick introduction of what we're doing. So we've been running Cloud Foundry for about three years now. We've had it in production for a little more than two and a half years. Uh, so we've been on this ride for a long time. Um, we're currently operating three Cloud Foundry instances. Uh, one of them is on the campus of Brigham Young University in Provo, Utah. That's uh, our primary deployment where most of our applications are running. Uh, we also have an instance running in our main IT offices in, in Riverton, Utah. It's about, I don't know, nine or 10 miles south of Salt Lake City. And as an organization, we're still trying to figure out Amazon. Uh, we have Cloud Foundry running up on, on AWS East. We're not using it heavily, um, but as we start to adopt Amazon more and more, Cloud Foundry is really the, the front door that our developers will use to deploy their applications to Cloud Foundry. Um, and we're hosting about 450 applications total right now. Um, somewhere between 20 and 40 of those are, are production applications. Um, just to give you a little idea about our team, um, we have two and a half engineers, two and a half software developers. Um, I say a half because our manager spends half of his time doing management and half of his time doing uh, development work. Um, we have one UI engineer. He's actually a .NET engineer, but um, because Cloud Foundry doesn't support .NET yet, he's kind of migrated over to being a UI engineer. Uh, we have an operations guy, and then our team's also responsible for our enterprise load balancing and caching, and so we have an engineer that uh, is responsible for that. Uh, so let's dig right into this. The whole point of this presentation is to talk about routing into Cloud Foundry, uh, how the Go router works, and how we've been able to run Cloud Foundry without the Go router. So I think this is a pretty typical uh, architecture. Granted, it's fairly simple. It doesn't have all the Cloud Foundry components, but it has all the main components of an HTTP request going from a client into an application. Um, for us, we're using a, a, an F5 local traffic manager in LTM. Um, in other cases, you might be using something like HA proxy. If you're running on Amazon, you might be using ELB. Um, but yeah, for us, we're using uh, um, the, the LTM there. From there, it load balances traffic into the Go routers. And then the Go routers then forward the request into your application. Uh, so let's talk about these components a little bit. So the first thing, you have this load balancer that sits in front of the Cloud Foundry. Um, in our case, like I said, we use this LTM. Um, it also does all of our TLS termination, all of the certificate management for the different domains that we have running on Cloud Foundry. And we, we didn't go out and deploy an, an F5 LTM just for Cloud Foundry. This is something that's fairly pervasive in our organization. And, uh, and so we're just using the, the existing standard that, that, that we have. Uh, the, the Go router um, is part of Cloud Foundry. And the Go router is really part of the magic of Cloud Foundry, right? One of the really cool things with Cloud Foundry, so you push your application up, and uh, within a few moments, it's actually running. But not only is it running, but you can easily route into your application and start sending requests immediately. You don't need to go talk to a, the DNS team and the network team and all those things. And so what the, the, the Go router does is it dynamically updates its load balancing tables based off of where the application is actually running. So when you start the application, when you scale it, the application crashes and it gets brought up somewhere else. The Go router gets updated and notified of all those different routing changes so that it knows exactly where your application is and where it can route the traffic to. And uh, the Go router, it's more than just a load balancer. It also provides logging and metrics, which is important. And uh, it also scales really well. You can scale the Go router horizontally and vertically, and uh, it works really well that way. Um, but in the three years we've been using Cloud Foundry, I've always kind of felt like this. So, I actually stole this meme from the Garmin guys that presented yesterday. I think it fits really well to what we're talking about here, right? We've already got this enterprise load balancer in front of Cloud Foundry, and right behind it we have another load balancer. Um, it's not necessarily bad, but we've already invested a ton of money into these F5 LTMs. And it's one of those few enterprise products where I feel like, yeah, it, it costs a lot of money, but we get a lot of value out of it. So I don't feel so bad about giving them a lot of money because the LTMs are, are fast. 
Uh, they're incredibly flexible. It's really easy to, to add and drop new virtual IP addresses on the, the LTM. Um, they're also programmable. They're really cool in that you can take a script and upload it to your load balancer and have that script run as traffic comes through the load balancer. Um, they have all the reliability that you come to expect from any enterprise product with automatic failover and things like that. And uh, one of the features that the, the developers and, and operations people in our organization have really come to love is support for these things called custom health checks, where at the load balancer you can say, hey, here's a URL to go hit. Depending on the, the reply from that, that request, it determines whether the application is actually healthy or not and whether it should be receiving traffic or not. And that's a feature that our customers have come to expect. Um, the LTM also has support for REST APIs. Uh, so you can remote control the config on the, the LTM. You can automate it programmatically and things like that. So this is the current architecture. Um, but I think what we'd really like it to look like is, is like this, right? Let's take the Go routers out of the picture. We've got, already got a capable load balancer. Why don't we just let it do all of the load balancing into Cloud Foundry? And I think the question that comes up is, you know, why does that even matter? I mean, the Go router already works today, right? What's the big deal? Um, and I think the big deal for us is that uh, everything that sits between your client and your application affects the, the, the reliability of your application. That's the critical path into your application. Um, so we have a, a customer that has an application running outside of Cloud Foundry, and they go and run these massive load tests that take like a whole weekend to run, and uh, they'll get very few errors or no errors not running on Cloud Foundry, but when they do run on Cloud Foundry, they get like a few hundred errors. And this is a few hundred errors out of like 100 million requests. And so for our team, it's like, who cares? It works just fine. It's just these corner cases. And uh, you know, for them, they're comparing to the other environment, like, hey, this is important to us. And so then it becomes our responsibility to try and troubleshoot what's going on. Um, uh, and, and other issues, like I said, the custom health checks, that's something that our customers have come to rely on. Um, and another big thing, so right now, most of our IT operations, as far as the data center and things like that, um, happen in one data center uh, at BYU. But as we're expanding out and embracing the cloud and moving to AWS, supporting global load balancing has become a really big priority for us. And it's something that F5 provides for us using a, a GeoDNS solution. Um, but it's a lot harder for us to integrate with Cloud Foundry when you've got the Go routers between the, the, the LTMs and, and Cloud Foundry. We can still do it but it would be a little bit easier for us if that wasn't there. Um, another issue that we've had is uh, configuration mismatch. So specifically, we've had an issue where we adjusted the TCP timeouts on our, on our LTMs, on our load balancers, and didn't make the same change on the Go router. And that caused uh, um, a lot of interesting behavior. Um, so the layer three security, it's actually a pet peeve of mine that we have a lot of applications that depend on this, but whether I like it or not, it's reality, and that we have applications that expect traffic to be coming in from a specific address, where they've had a lockdown through firewalls and other mechanisms, that the, the route that their traffic comes in from the, the public internet or from some VPN or whatever it might be into their application. And with the Go router in the middle, we really can't do that later through security. Um, the other thing is, if we take the Go router out, things are faster, there's less latency there, right? There's one less component to route through. Um, but the, you know, if you're going over the public internet, it's really not that big of a deal going through the, the Go router. In fact, it would be almost impossible to measure whether or not the Go router is actually running, coming in over the, the public internet. Um, but for a lot of our customers that are building out large microservices where they're making hundreds or thousands of REST calls, that, that performance has, has an impact on what they're doing. So what we've done is we've gone and built a component that we call no router. Um, and I think no router in a lot of ways is a testament to the awesome architecture of Cloud Foundry and that we're able to take a, a component of Cloud Foundry, rip it out and replace it with a different implementation. Um, so what no router is, is it's a Bosch deployable agent 
that uh, runs on a VM and it collects routing information the same way that the Go router does. So today we, we're using NATs, it's a messaging bus used with Cloud Foundry, and we collect all the information saying, hey, an application started up, an application scaled out, an application crashed and got brought up on another VM. We capture all of that information and uh, then we use that to dynamically update the, the LTM using the LTM's REST API. Um, currently, this doesn't work with Diego. Diego has a new API for managing routes. Uh, we don't support that yet. I was hoping to have that done in time for Summit, but it's not done. So another week or two or so, and we'll have um, initial support for using Diego and the, the new routing API. And it's currently beta quality. Uh, we know there's some issues with it, but for the most part, it works pretty well. Um, and of course, it's open source. It's licensed under the Apache Software License 2.0. And uh, I, I wrote it in Java. Um, I know Go is the new big, sexy programming language. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Go. I don't hate it. If people want to use Go and they're productive with it, I think that's great. But I'm, I'm usually twice as productive in, in Java as I am in, in Go. So I chose to, to write it in Java. What was that? Um, yeah, and it's out on, on GitHub. So uh, we also have a Bosch release for, uh, for deploying it. So it's super easy to deploy. If, if you know how to use Bosch, it should be fairly easy for you to deploy no router. If you don't know how to use Bosch, you should learn how to use Bosch. It's well worth the investment. All right, so I want to talk a little bit about how we've architected Go router. Um, so there, there's two main components. There's this no router core component. And right now we have this no router F5 component. And they're very loosely coupled. And the responsibility of the no router core component is to collect all the routing information, all the routing updates as, as applications move around on Cloud Foundry, to collect all that information, and then broadcast that out within the application to the no router F5 component to let it know, hey, the, the state has changed. You need to go do something about it. So those two components operate independently. Um, and then the NOAA router F5 component goes out, out and updates the, the LTM. So the reason that we architected it this way is uh, not everybody's using F5 LTMs. Um, and we wanted to provide ways that other people could come in and use NOAA router to perhaps integrate directly with uh, Amazon ELB or some other enterprise load balancing. Um, so the Go router itself has some fairly distinct behaviors that are unique to the, the Go router. Um, one of them is how it does session affinity. So if you've got an application that needs to have sticky sessions, um, the way that works with the Go router is you send a J session ID cookie down to the application. The Go router sees that, and then it ma makes sure that any future requests um, go to the same application instance. So we're able to mimic that behavior on, uh, on the LTM. Uh, we're able to do that through uh, uh, the fact that the LTM is programmable. We can write our own scripts that run on the, the load balancer. It uses this awful programming language called Tickle. If any of you have any desire to look at Tickle, I would highly discourage you from doing so. It's awful. But it works. And it actually I'm, it works very well, to be fair. Um, but if I had to choose between Tickle and Go, I'd take Go every time. So um, Anyway, so the Go router also has its own um, error responses that we've been able to mimic on the LTM. And one of the really nice features of the Go router is if your application's starting to come up, but it's not fully up, and it tries to route a request to that application and it fails, it will retry to a different instance of the application. And we have that same behavior using the, the LTM. So right now, we have our no router running uh, in our production Cloud Foundry environments. Um, but it's not for production traffic. So we have multiple LTMs in our organization. We have uh, production LTMs and then some non-production LTMs. And on our non-production LTMs, we're using no router. And so far, it's actually working really well. Um, <clears throat> all right, so I want to change gears a little bit and talk a little bit less about 
networks and load balancers and, and talk a little bit about uh, troubleshooting because I think this is the aspect that really pushed us to build no router in the first place. Um, so on our team, we manage Cloud Foundry, but we also manage the enterprise load balancers. And uh, when I joined this team about three years ago, one of the things I thought was really interesting uh, is about once a week, we'd have a, a developer or some operations guy come to us and say, hey, my application's not working, and it's your load balancer's fault. And nine times out of 10, it was because they had misconfigured something in their application or something that had nothing to do with the load balancer. But because the enterprise load balancer is this opaque system that sits out there, it's really easy for them to say, you know, I can't prove it's not the load balancer, so I'm going to blame the load balancer. And, uh, you know, we get blamed for all kinds of things. And what's interesting is applications have migrated to, to, to Cloud Foundry. We see a lot of developers come and say, oh, it's the load balancer's fault. We show them it's not, and then they come back and say, oh, that's got to be the Go router's fault then. Um, and so in a lot of ways, it's kind of doubled our effort to, to troubleshoot things and to prove to them that it's not the load balancer's fault, it's their application or some other factor, except for the few times where it, you know, it is our fault. But, um, so we have had some issues with the, the, the Go router itself that were fairly challenging to debug. Um, I don't want to get into what the actual issues were because really they're issues with the Go HTTP library, some quirks in there that kind of percolated into the, uh, to the Go router. Um, but we, we were deploying a COTS application, and so because it was a COTS application, we had a lot less visibility into what was going on with this application. And we were seeing a lot of really weird behavior as we were accessing this application through, through Cloud Foundry, and it, became a, it was a really uh, difficult challenge to, to debug exactly what was going on. Um, but to be fair to the Go router, though, I think we see a lot less problems, people blaming things on the Go router, because the Go router isn't nearly as opaque is something like an enterprise load balancer. They have some visibility into it because of the logging and the metrics that the Go router provides. Um, so you get access logs from the Go router that get published over uh, Loggergator. So it's really easy as an application developer to be able to go in and see how, what's actually going through the Go router, um, as well as metrics. So you can collect met metrics through uh, Loggergator. Although collecting metrics today isn't as easy as maybe it should be, but you know, we'll get there. But the fact that we can actually go in and see that in the, in the fire hose and be able to say, oh yeah, traffic is going through the Go router. You know, that's an important feature. Um, and that's definitely a feature that we don't want to miss out on with, with no router, because it's a really important feature. Um, and so we're actually able to publish the same uh, access logs the same way the Go router does over Loggergator, as well as metrics. Um, and, but it, it's a bit of a challenge to do it with the LTM because the uh, logger gator depends on its own protocol called Dropsond. Dropsond depends on protocol buffers, and there's no protocol buffers at all on, on the LTM. And there's no chance I'm going to go and try and implement protocol buffers in Tickle. And uh, so we came up with a solution that actually works really well. Uh, so on the LTM, it has its own, uh, it's a feature that they call high speed logging. It's a way of sending a logging out to a, a third party over the network. And so we're able to send text based logs to no router. And then what no router does is it's able to convert that text message into a drop sound message and then pass that message on to, oops, onto Metron. So Metron is a component of Loggergator. Metron is what receives all of the uh, logging events and messages and then forwards that on to the, the magic that is the Loggergator system. Um, so we still have all of that, and uh, you know, it works really well. Um, but because a lot of the problems that we've had, you know, troubleshooting the the LTM and, and getting visibility into what's happening in the LTM available to our customers. Um, there's a lot more that I would like to do as far as integrating the LTM with, uh, with Loggergator. And I think this is a feature that's, um, I mean, 
even if you wanted to continue to use Go Router or whatever, that's fine. Um, but I think with no router, uh, what I would really like to build is a system where we can actually collect more of the metrics and information on the LTM and make that available over log aggregator. So if you are using an enterprise F5, you might have a traditional deployment with Go Router, but still be able to collect a lot of these things and send them off to your applications. Um, but yeah, so the LTM, it collects a lot of really valuable statistics like uh, connections per second uh, and not just the actual TCP connection. But if you have you know, multiple HTTP requests over a single HTTP connection, it, it collects statistics about all of that, how much data is going in and out, data rates, and all those kinds of things. And so really what we like to do is be able to take all of those awesome statistics that are available on the LTM and make them available to um, our customers that are running applications on Cloud Foundry. Um, all right. so. I forgot to start my timer. I have no idea how much time I have left, but since lunch is next, I don't think anybody would mind if we got out a little bit early. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, you know, the pros of this type of architecture using no router. Um, the single layer load balancing, um, I think that's big for us, um, especially since you know, on our team, we manage the enterprise load balancers, but we also manage caching appliances and a variety of other things. And we've seen lots of problems where the more proxies you have, the more prone you are to random failures. Um, you know, we've had issues where we've had testers come and say, hey, they're gonna, you know, we're going to run a load test. And they told us it was going to be a small load test, and it ended up being a huge load test, and it brought down a whole bunch of intermediate proxies and things like that. And, and we've had go router outages because of load tests. Um, and so the fewer components that we have there, the less components there are that can fail. And that's a big deal for us operationally. Um, it also simplifies leveraging a lot of the, the F5 features that are there, such as the, you know, the global traffic management, the GeoDNS stuff that uh, the F5 provides. And there are a lot of other things that we'd like to start using, like security profiles and caching, that no router makes it a lot simpler for us to, to, to use. Um, like I talked about, it uh, simplifies troubleshooting. And uh, there's a lot lower latency when you only have one hop. And uh, the, the LTM is a lot faster than the Go router as far as forwarding requests. That's what it's built for. That's how F5 makes all of its money. Um, it's through load balancing, so they've built a, a pretty amazing product. Um, and then the layer three and four capabilities that we get by going through uh, a real load balancer is pretty significant. There's been a lot of talk uh, here at Summit about adding support for not just HTTP routing into Cloud Foundry applications, uh, but also generic TCP with no router. We can do that today. We can just create a virtual IP on the no router that goes to one of the no router managed pools on the, on the LTM and, and do TCP. Um, instead of HTTP. So, you know, it gives us a lot of flexibility there. Um, of course, there are significant cons. One of the big ones is it's non-standard. That's just a thing that, that, that we've built. It is open source. Um, we would like to see, you know, a community get built around it for people that are interested in, in running in an architecture like this with a, a single layer of load balancing. Um, but yeah, but until it matures, it's just something that we've built. Um, and currently, we only support the, the F5 LTMs. Um, and another big inhibitor for a lot of organizations, I think, would be gaining access to your enterprise load balancer. Uh, for a lot of people, the load balancers are managed by a network team that's somewhat disconnected from the a platform team or a DevOps um, uh, type team. So. You know, gaining access, that might be an issue. Um, Feature-wise, we'll always log behind, lag behind Go Router. Go Router is the standard. Um, fortunately, Go Router is open source, and it's really easy to see when something gets committed to Go Router and see exactly what's happening there so we can keep up with, uh, with Go Router. Um, we are missing some features. We don't support wildcard routes right now. Like I said, we don't support the, the route API, so this won't work with Diego today. Um, uh, context path. Routing is coming, so you, you, soon with Cloud Foundry, you'll be able to bind a, um, not just a host name to your application, but also a, a path. Um, so we're going to have to figure out some way to support that. 
And then there's this idea called route services where you can create a, a service that uh, affects how uh, requests get routed into your application. Using the Cloud Foundry services mechanism, we're going to have to figure out how that works, although that hasn't really been built yet, but it's something that we'll have to, to play catch up with. All right, so we've got five minutes left. Um, does anybody have any questions? Okay. So, Mike, this is an awesome talk, but at uh, the very beginning you mentioned that performance is one of the reasons, or latency is one of the reasons that you, you guys went down with no way without. Uh, no pun intended. So, I was expecting. It's actually, it says on. I'll repeat your question, go ahead. Like before, is there an after benchmark? Oh, thank you. For um, the mic on. So I didn't want to focus too much on the the performance actually because I mean that was that was more of a plus for us building no router. Um, it wasn't the biggest motivation, um, but yeah, go out to my Twitter account and you can see a graph that I posted a few months ago and all the feedback that I got from it. So that being said, so I, I did do a benchmark, and you know, just going through the LTM was significantly faster. And the awesome thing that came out of that, though, was the Pivotal guys turned around immediately, and we worked really closely with them in, in identifying some performance issues. So actually, in the next release of Cloud Foundry, the Go router will be quite a bit faster latency-wise. So. Hi. Um, this is also regarding the performance issue. Uh, you already mentioned the session keep alive between the router, Go router, and apps is not there. Does this fix that issue? Meaning, of course, you have F5 can keep alive the session. Have you enabled that for your setup right now? And has it given you a performance boost? Um, with the, the, the sticky sessions, the session keep alive features that Oh, okay. So the, the connection is about the questions about uh, HTTP keep alive between the Go router and the application. Right. Yeah. So we've actually enabled that on on the LTM. So um, that is an issue with the the Go router in that for every HTTP request that comes through, when it hits the Go router, the Go router will open a new TCP connection to your application for each request. Um, that does cause some overhead, although it's not that big because typically they're on the same network right next to each other. Um, but using the LTM, it is faster to, to keep that, that TCP connection alive. Uh, the LTM also has a feature called One Connect, where you can tell it to keep a TCP connection open um, for multiple requests originating from different clients. Um, it's not enabled by default because it's a security issue with some applications, but I think with most modern applications, it's not an issue. And that's something that we've, uh, we've played with and enabled, and it does have a significant improvement as far as latency goes. Hey, Mike, um, another question is like, um, also in your opening slides, you cited layer three security as one of the motivations. Um, can you help us understand like, how some of your applications are trying to restrict inbound IPs and how moving to F5 actually enables you to do that again? Okay, sure, that's a great question, yeah. So one of the things that, that the LTM enables is um, from a network perspective, it's configured so that you can have uh, any number of IP addresses on that, that LTM, so virtual IP addresses. So I can go out to the LTM and say, hey, I wanna create a new a virtual IP address, and it'll give me a, a new IP address that's unique to that you know, virtual server. Um, and then what we can do is we can say, when you load balance requests that come in on this IP address, send them out over the same IP address. Uh, so the application can say, I've got this particular virtual IP address. It's got whatever security se settings, you know, authentication or authorization or whatever it might be and then we can forward that off to the application from that same IP address. So the application can then say, I will only accept connections if they come from the specific IP address. So it's a very fragile way of doing security. I hate it, but 
whatever, we gotta support it because we have apps that need it. All right, any other questions? Oh, another question right here. Um, so the question is about uh, load balancing between applications and, and services, basically. So a lot of that's left up to the, the application itself or the service itself, depending on what it needs. Uh, for a long time with like uh, our databases, we load balance uh, to database instances in like an Oracle RAT cluster. Um, but um, Oracle's changed their architecture, so we don't need to do that as much. All right, well, I've got a hard stop, so if you have any more questions, please come talk to me in person. All right, thank you. <laughs>